Alright, hello everybody. Today I'm making a video on tutorials for um, making your corner pieces so that the corner pieces don't fall out of your puzzle and so that they're connected to the piece that's supposed to keep them in the puzzle. Um, this is especially helpful for higher order puzzles, so if you're building anything from a 4x4 to a 17x17, 17 17, this should be very helpful for you. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so today I'm working on Autodesk Inventor. I really tried using SolidWorks for you guys, but I just couldn't do it. I'm not, I'm not good at it at all. Uh, so we're going to be using Autodesk Inventor, which is very similar to SolidWorks, and it's really not the... You should already know how to do all of these things. There might be a few new tools that you might need to learn how to do, like the offset tool, but uh, it should really be already familiar, and what you should really be taking out of this video is the ideas of how you would effectively create a corner piece. Um, so what I'm doing right now is uh, we want a spherical core for our puzzle, so I've made this uh, 46 millimeter circle, as you can see here. Uh, I also have this vertical line here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this vertical line four millimeters that way, and that's going to be um, part of the core of the puzzle. That's um, that's what's going to hold everything inside of it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to offset that again to 16.66 divided by 2. And that's just so that we get um, an even uh, so that we get a proportional 3x3 three three puzzle, but you really can um, you can put that at any distance. And for a higher, higher order, order puzzle, excuse me, um, which we'll see in a few minutes, uh, it will be a little bit different. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim out all of the extra pieces, the extra lines here. So you can see all that I have left here are these three lines. Um, it's kind of difficult to see because of the dimension. I'm actually going to remove that dimension. Okay, so we just have four, uh, I'm sorry, three lines here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the, the clearance right inside of this puzzle. So I'm going to take all of these, offset them 0.25 millimeters that way and 0.25 millimeters that way. And that will be the, um, the cut of the puzzle. Now I'm just going to connect it on each of the sides. This line that I just drew, this is actually what we revolve around. that line right there. So now I'm going to exit the sketch and revolve that and I'm going to cut away material. So in SolidWorks this is going to be a little bit different but you should be able to figure it out pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mirror this so that uh, that cut is on all three axes like we'd like it to be. Uh, my method for doing this is a little bit different, but there's multiple ways to do it, all which, uh, all which work very well. Okay, so since I'm working in Autodesk Inventor, it's a little bit different, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these bodies here and now you can see the inside of the puzzle. So you don't have the center pieces and the core exactly, but you can see the edge pieces right here and the corner pieces here. Um, so what we're going to do is we can go back to that sketch and we can move all of these different pieces around and see what happens. So like with something like this, you're going to be actually cutting into the center up here.
But watch what happens when I move the, the spherical center core down to about that size. You see the corners, oh I guess not, but the corners would usually be separate from this piece here, holding them inside the puzzle. And that's exactly what we want to prevent. Um, this is pretty easy to work around when you're making a 3x3 three three or a 2x2, two two. but when you're making a higher order puzzle like a 4x4 four four or a 5x5, five five, it's a little bit more difficult to figure out why this is happening. If I just put it down a little bit more, that corner will be completely disconnected, as you can see here. I can also delete this dimension here, and then I can move this around like that. So you can see here, again, the connection between this spherical part and the corner piece itself is very small and would likely break off if you were to prototype this. If we were making something like a 4x4, four four, I'll just get my calculator out here pretty quick, 56 divided by 4 would be 14. So we want to offset this by 14 millimeters. Now if I, if I go back to my finished product, the corner is going to be disconnected. So as you can see, as you add more layers, it's a lot more difficult to connect your centers, your, um, your center sphere, to your outside corner. In fact, let's see if that's possible at all with the configuration that we have. Because right now, we can't have this um, reach the surface up here. Okay, so it, it does work, but if we were to make a 5x5, five five, um, and especially if we were to make anything above that, this would not work. So there must be a better way to do this. So let me show you um, how to make your corner pieces a lot better. So we're going to start over here, and instead of making that sketch on the front plane, this is the front plane, if you um, didn't see before. I'm going to make this angled plane here and create a sketch there. I'm going to just briefly project the geometry so that you can see it. And this is, this is the, um, the cross section of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build the exact same thing. So I'm going to offset this 4 millimeters again. I'll just offset this a, um, a certain distance and I will trim away anything that we don't need like last time. We'll offset that 0.25 and 0.25 that's our clearance. Um, that clearance might not actually work for you, I don't know, I'm just trying to incorporate it into my design so that you can at least see that there should be some clearance there. Um, but that would be, in reality, be 0.5 millimeters, which might not be enough, depending on what kind of what kind of software you're, I mean, um, what kind of prototyping you're using. If you're using 3D printing, uh, fused deposition, SLS, or if you're molding it somehow. Uh, so this is the exact same thing as before. You can see I can drag this along again, and we will revolve this so that you can see it. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select the axis. Choose cut. In SolidWorks, cutting it out is a little bit different. It shouldn't be too difficult for you to find. Again, I'm going to use my um, strange met method of mirroring things over.
Okay, and now we'll delete the geometry that we do not need. Okay, so this is the exact same thing as before, right? So we can make a sketch on this plane, or this plane, or that plane, or even that plane, and we can get the same thing. But this, um, the way that we set it up right here is actually advantageous for us, because if we were making a bigger cube, that it would be a lot easier to make our corner pieces. Uh, so let me show you why. Right here, because um, because this is actually a cube, we have this line here, this axis, and it extends from this corner of the puzzle to this corner of the puzzle, and it passes through the center of the puzzle. So um, the corner piece, the, uh, the corner stock, which connects the corner, the external co corner piece to the inside corner piece, the the spherical or cylindrical cut piece that will slide in the rest of them. Um, that is represented by this line. And our corner piece needs to have some sort of thickness. So for certain types of plastic, I would use like three millimeters or uh, like 3.5 millimeters, some, somewhere around there. So what I can do is if I, let's say I have a five by five. A five by five would be a proportional five by five would be eleven point two. So I'm going to make that twenty two point four out. Okay, so that is the cut of our puzzle, so that we have our corner piece. So this obviously doesn't work because this line again here, that is our our um, corner stock. And anything that we revolve around that intersects this line here means that our corner is not going to build properly. It's going to be disconnected from the center. So we can't really drag this up because that's going to cut into the top. Oh, this is not constrained anymore. Let me constrain that again. Eight. No, that was supposed to be four. Sorry. Um, so you can see that now our centerpieces wouldn't exist if we uh, if we put this up all the way where we wanted it to be, and that would um, that centerpiece or the corner piece would both they would both be too small. So we need to fix this in some way. So what we can do is we can actually offset this. And we can say, okay, I want my I want my corner piece to be three millimeters wide so that it's since it's made of plastic, we want it to be strong enough. So it's gonna be three millimeters wide. Um, so what I would do is I would divide that in half, so it'll be one point five, and then I would add my clearance to the right. So that would be 0.25. So I want one point seven five offset from this line here. And then what I can do is I can take that and I can offset that line 0.25 in that way and 0.25 in that way. Now I'm going to trim out the extra lines and this is our new cut that we have here. And I can still drag this, I think. Maybe not. Maybe not as much as before. I would have to um, do some modifications on the design here. But you can see that now I know that it's not going to intersect this corner piece. So, let me try this again. Okay. 
I just need to fix the sketch a little bit so that it will be revolving the right things because it did not select the right geometry. Or at least it didn't select all of the geometry. So I'll select that, and that, and that. Okay. And that's the new cut. So you can see we have a 5x5 five five corner. It's, uh, it's not that great looking a 5x5, five five, but the corner piece is correct. Let me show you. you can see that the 5x5 five five corner piece is connected to the center piece right there. So this isn't really all that effective because in our previous part what we did was we used the center plane so that our, our cut for our center pieces would not intersect here and by that I mean that this here didn't go up to there. Right, that looks similar to the 5x5 five five over here. So we can kind of guess and check over here. We can move down this piece. if it'll let me at the moment. But it still needs some improving. So what we can do is we can go back to this one. And we are... the solution really is this. What we can do is we can go back to here, and we're going to use the sketch on our front plane like we had originally wanted. But what we're going to do is we're going to just draw in the corner piece line in here that we're not supposed to intersect. You might think that this is that line right there, 45 degrees, but it's not. If we make this if we make a rectangle, the top of it is 56 halves, the side of it is 56 halves times 1.41, which is the square root of 2, and then we draw a line from the center of the cube out to the corner piece, I mean the corner of that rectangle, that is the line that we can't intersect. So I move that up above that line, and now the puzzle is fine. So this line right here is, um, y you need a little bit of uh, knowledge of trigonometry to figure out where that is, but if you just remember that this is, um, this is half of the size of your cube times 1.41, then that's really all you need to know about that. And then you can do something like we did over here and make the corner piece so that it doesn't intersect. So that's what we can do here. Um, so this is really helpful for those larger cubes like the, uh, the 4x4, the 5x5, um, and especially even bigger than that, um, like world record sized cubes like the 17 by 17. Um, so hopefully this will help you guys because uh, it's definitely a little bit more difficult to do and um, otherwise you'd kind of just be doing a guess and check method and if you can't figure out why the corner pieces aren't working then that can be very frustrating. So uh, hopefully this will be very helpful for you guys um, and uh, thank you for watching.